Hello everybody, welcome in. I hope you're doing great. We are ready to study Evan Deal, left tackle for Alabama. Um, I hope you're enjoying the off season. It's been bonkers, even more crazy than we thought it would be. We talked about that in a video last week as well. So I hope you're enjoying the off season. Today though, with the draft coming up in just a few weeks, we're looking at Evan Neal, left tackle for Alabama. I've also left up, not to be confusing, I've left up part of the study from Ikemi Kwanu, who's the left tackle from NC State. And the, and the reason for that is, I, I will do a comparison, not so much to find out who's the better player, but just to give us a feel for what people playing the same position and doing it very well, what they do differently. And, and there's actually quite a few differences here between these two guys. And, and so that's really what I want to focus on as I'm comparing this. But let's start off with, with Evan Neal here and let's look at his grades, left tackle for Alabama. Strength, I've got him at a B to a B plus. Now, He's not lacking anything strength-wise. Uh, I, I, you'll, you'll almost never see him get pushed around. But what you also won't see is him collapsing an entire uh, defensive line. Uh, you won't see him putting a whole lot of guys on the ground. Uh, you won't see him running guys just completely off the field. Not, not, not regularly. You, you'll see that to some extent, some degree. That's not what you'll see on a regular basis. So he's plenty strong enough, plenty strong enough to get the job done in blocking. He's almost never going to lose a battle. Um, it, 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 if he's getting pushed around, it's extremely rare. But in terms of strength, it's not like he's just dominating people and just putting them flat on the ground. That, that's not exactly what's happening here. But in terms of strength, I've got him at a B to a B plus. Plenty there to work with, no problems at all. In terms of quickness, got him at a B minus to B minus to a regular B. Uh, for Evan Neal, he, he's not the most fast guy in the world. I might say, what's well, left tackle? Why does it matter? Well, for Ikemi Kwanu, and we'll, we'll cover that a little bit more here in a second. For Ikwanu, you're looking at more of a guy who can go all over the field. Ikwanu can rotate all the way across the line and block at the other end. For Iquano, he can go out in space and block. For Iquano, he can get to the second level and block a lot. And he's just that fast. He's that athletic. And Evan Neal really is not that kind of guy. He, he really does better in small spaces. Uh, same thing here with the, with the versatility. I've got him at a B- minus for versatility. He, he's not the guy who's going to be all over the field. He's really better in small spaces. He's versatile enough. He can get to the second level and block if, if, if you need him to. Uh, he can scoot out in space and block a little bit if you want him to, but really his job is going to be, his main focus is going to be as a left tackle, it's going to be right there at left tackle at the point of impact. That's really where he's going to be strongest at. So in terms of quickness, I've got him at a B minus B. In terms of versatility, again, it's a B minus. It's your left tackle, who cares, right? It's not the most important thing in the world. We'll get to the most important thing in the world here in just a second. But in terms of versatility, athleticism, quickness, he, he's got those things, but it's not at a peak level. Certainly not the way uh, Ikemi Kwanu is. I Iquano for left tackle has A speed, A to A plus versatility. You'll find Iquano going all the way across the field to block somebody. You'll find Iquano going way up here at second, second and third levels blocking people. You'll find him out here blocking people. <laughs> You'll find Iquano doing all kinds of things just all over the football field. But for uh, Evan Neal, he's pretty much going to stay, for the most part, right there at his left tackle spot. And that's really his world where he operates the best. So and not a deficit. Uh, not necessarily any super strength there, but good solid performance in terms of versatility and in terms of quickness. Run blocking, I've got him at A minus to B plus. There's nothing wrong with Evan Neal's uh, uh, run blocking. He's just not dominant at run blocking. Usually that first block right there at the line of scrimmage, usually that's a good impact block. He sustains it, but he doesn't, again, because of the strength factor, he doesn't quite dominate people and push them around in run blocking the way Iquano does. And that's a noticeable difference. We talked in the other video with Iquano about he, how he was basically able to push an entire defensive line all the way across, opens up a massive hole. Evan Neal doesn't quite do it as sharply or as cleanly. He gets the job done. Usually whatever guy he's blocking, or whatever point of impact he needs to make, he gets there. When it comes to second level blocking, usually he gets to the guy, but not always. 
He's just not as athletic in run blocking. So when you're, when you're asking who's the better run blocker, by a fairly wide margin, it's Iquanu. When you're asking who's stronger and pushing guys around more often, especially in run blocking, by a pretty significant margin, it is Ikam Iquanu. Okay, so uh, he's faster. Iquanu is faster. Iquanu is more athletic. Iquanu is, it tends to look like he's stronger, technique better, whatever. Iquanu is the guy. Here's where it really starts to get interesting, though. Pass blocking. In pass blocking, Evan Neal is better. Evan Neal is significantly better. I graded Iquanu at an A minus B plus. And again, it's not much wrong with Iquanu's uh, pass protection, but Evan Neal is better. And for all the wonderful things you can say about Iquanu in terms of strength and quickness and run blocking and versatility, at the end of the day, this is your left tackle we're talking about. And the number one job, the number one priority, the most important thing by far is how good are they gonna be in pass protection? We can run the ball somewhere else. We can run the ball up the middle. We can run it off a right tackle. We can run it out wide on jet sweeps. We can say, screw the run game and just pass it to the running backs on some of the running downs. We have a lot of options in terms of running the football. But when it comes to uh, pass protection, we need to know that that left tackle, both tackles, but left tackle today, we gotta know that that, that, that left tackle and get the job done of pass protection. And Evan Neal is better. I've got him graded as an A in pass blocking. He rarely ever gets B. Now, who did I study? This is a fair question to ask about. Who did we watch him play against? I watched him both games against Georgia. That is when Alabama played them in the SEC title game and the national title game. Watched them against LSU, against Texas A&M, against Auburn, against Florida. Those six games. Some of the best competition in terms of defensive lines that you'll find anywhere in college football. Some of the most athletic guys, some of the strongest guys. Evan Neal was kind of going up against these guys pretty frequently. And I think I saw him get beat two or three times in all six games put together. It wasn't much. It was rare. Evan Neal very rarely, rarely gets beat uh, in pass protection. It, it, it was incredibly rare. And that's what I want to settle in and talk about here is this pass blocking. Because at the end of the day, both guys are excellent. Both guys do a little bit different things. For Neil, he's the better guy on pass blocking, pass protection, which is the most important thing you want out of your left tackle. For Iquano, he's better with strength, better with quickness, better athleticism, better versatility, covers a lot more areas of the field if you've got things you want to do. So. If, if you're the kind of an offense that wants to settle back and you want your quarterback to drop back consistently and, and throw deeper passes, Evan Neal is your guy. If you've got more of a modern kind of offense where the quarterback is very mobile and you like to do a lot of creative things and you like to move your quarterback around and you like to do all kinds of uh, innovative things with the run game and, and you like to prefer to do a lot more flexible things, Iquano is your guy. But both guys are excellent in all of this stuff, okay? There, there is, there is, you're not going to be disappointed with either one of these guys. Just understand that they are not quite the same. They are a little bit different. Now, in pass protection, I, I, I noticed one very distinct difference between what they tend to do. Iquano, it can be Iquano, when he's operating at left tackle, when he's getting rushed by the edge rusher, Iquano tends to set up on the inside first. He tends to guard his inside first, and he tends to want to push guys to the outside edge. And almost always, except for maybe once or twice a game, almost always Iquano is able to just drop down and push them, not even around the quarterback, just keep pushing them down the field. He's got that little glide step where he just kind of keeps pushing them all the way down the field, and the edge rushers almost never... It was about one and a half times per game with Iquano. Uh, almost never got to the quarterback, and, and that's how Iquano operated. Though Iquano likes to operate from the inside first. He likes to stop that inside move right there, and then he likes to push guys past to the outside edge and just keep pushing them down the field. I didn't pick up on this at first, but this is something you'll see with Evan Neal. Evan Neal tends to, he tends to be very focused on stopping that outside edge. I, 
I, I can't read his mind and I can't see his eyes, but it's almost as if he is paranoid about stopping the outside edge. Like he does not want anyone ever to go around that outside edge. And because of that, when you see him start to set up, almost immediately on most snaps, you'll see this gap created right here where he is not, under any circumstances, he is not going to allow somebody to beat him on the outside edge. Now, I almost never, I, again, I said I, I think three times in six games I saw him actually get beat in pass protection. Somebody actually got out and around him. So it's very rare. He got beat on the outside a couple of times and like once on the inside. It's, it's rare to ever see it. He is so good in pass protection. But if somebody's going to beat him, it may be on the inside edge. So what we saw a lot here was guys had almost, almost on the average play, almost no chance at beating him on the outside edge because he's setting up out there. It's like he's overcompensating or overfocused on that outside edge. And what we saw a lot was guys trying to actually work their way back to the inside, back to where the quarterback is. So if this is the center, here's your quarterback. We saw guys trying trying to work their way back to the inside. Now, it almost never worked, I think, one time. But what I did see, and, and this is, I'm not even sure that this is a deficit, but it's just a question mark for, for playing at the NFL level because you're not going up against college guys anymore. You're going up against the NFL guys who are some of the same guys he played in college, but now they're a little bit faster. Now they're a little bit more coached, a little bit more experienced. They have a little bit more moves, and they're a little bit stronger too. So when he goes up against these NFL guys, what I saw sometimes was he seemed to be on the edge of holding, of getting, up, getting called for a holding penalty, which he very rarely did. But there were times, he's so good at keeping his hands in, but there were times where it looked like the players who were trying to beat him to the inside, and they tried it a lot, <laughs> and they almost never got by with it. But it, it seemed like he was right there on the verge of being called for holding because you could see he had that right hand right here on the inside. Looked like grabbing jersey, but he was do, he very well taught. You can't see him reaching, and that's usually when you get called for holding, right? When your hand's out there and the, the referee can see the jersey. He's got good balance. The hand is in. But my question will be, when he's going up against uh, defensive ends in the NFL who are more experienced, have more moves, and are stronger and a little bit faster, will that become a problem for Neil working here to the inside? Will they be able to beat him inside? And will he then have to recenter his game to where guys can then work him on the outside? Now, I don't think that's going to be a big deal, but if you're asking the question, how good can Evan Neal be? This is where you start to get into just a tiny sliver of gray area. Will he just be the pro bowler who's consistently good all the time or will he be so good that he's getting voted into all pros all the time? And, and that's the question for Evan Neal. That is where you really start to see the differences here. Okay, when he's working to this inside edge, he is so good at it, almost nobody ever beat him at all. Um, this, this was fantastic to watch him play. It, after a while, I said the same thing about Iquanu that I'll say about Neal. After a while, it was almost boring watching Evan Neal because he does the same thing every single time and he's good at it every single time, and he's efficient every single time. Just pure excellence from Evan Neal, especially in pass protection. Three times in six games, and this was against some of the best competition that you will see in college football. The Southeastern Conference, as you know, puts out, on average, the best defensive lines, even among some of their weaker teams. They are strong, they are tough, they are physical, they are fast, they are everything, and he's going up against that week in and week out. What you don't see from Neil, he's not as crisp, he's not as clean and clear cut in the run blocking as Iquanu, but in pass protection, he is better, and, and it's, it's significantly better. Not so much that you don't want Iquanu pass blocking, because Iquanu is good too, but Neil is better. And, and that's what you're seeing right here. Alabama had <laughs> horrible offensive line problems all year due to injuries, due to some inexperienced players coming in, but not from Evan Neal. Evan Neal was stout 
all year long. He just did an outstanding job. The one other thing I, I, I will cover here, and I will finish, flooding the B-gap. This was something that I saw uh, versus LSU. Saw it a little bit against Texas A&M, a little bit against Auburn, but especially against LSU. Because teams knew, and again, I, the, the A-gaps right here on the sides of the centers and the B-gaps are right here between the guard and the tackle. Um, because teams knew that Evan Neal tended to open up, tends to leave a gap right there, tends to be hyper concerned about never getting beat on the outside edge and then stopping that inside cut. Because teams knew that there was a gap here, I saw more than once teams actually overloading that side. And it's not unusual. You, you see this in college football. We saw, I think, some in the, in the Super Bowl uh, with, with the Rams. This is not unusual. We're not reinventing the wheel here. This is just some of the things to, to note. It was not unusual to see them put a guy out here, and I guess the nine technique, whatever that is, put a guy right here, and then put a guy right here. And it was doing two things. I saw both things happen. Number one, it's making Evan Neal decide who to block. Do I block this inside guy and then have a pure edge rusher getting to my quarterback? Or do I block the faster outside guy? Usually block the inside guy, right? But the outside guy is faster usually. They'll block the outside guy and then the inside guy's coming in or I'll let the guard worry about the inside guy. This shouldn't be as big of a problem in the NFL, but you do see it. You NFL lines tend to communicate better. They work, they have more time together, et cetera. They're usually better coached. But you do see it. You saw where Evan Neal was forced to make decisions about which guy to block. But what I really saw even more than that if it was obvious that Evan Neal was going to block this outside edge rusher, when that gap comes, it was not unusual to have a guy shoot right through that gap and, and, and get to the quarterback and get pressure on Bryce Young there at Alabama. And there's nothing Evan Neal can do about that unless, unless he does what Aquano does, and Aquano shuts down that inside first. Aquano always shuts down that inside first, and then works guys to the outside. But Iquanu gave up more sacks when he did that. Okay, so a little bit of give and take. We, we see one guy who's working inside first and pushing out. We see another guy who's shutting down the outside first and then pinning the inside. Be interested to see what NFL teams want Evan Neal to do and what he's comfortable doing. Again, he, he may not be able to shut down both gaps. It, it is only the best tackles in the world, the Anthony Munozes and the Walter Joneses of the world, who can shut down both the inside and the outside. So I'll be, I'll be fascinated to see as these two guys get on, get on the NFL teams, are they capable of shutting down both gaps? We'll see. Iquano, by and large, shut down both gaps. But as he did so, it left open gaps a lot of times for defenses to kind of flood what they knew was going to open up right there uh, for Evan Neal. All right, I think that's it. The shorter video today, uh, I think we covered everything. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Have a great one. Bye.